Cody's Mega Math Challenge gives teams of 11th and 12th graders the opportunity to tackle a real-world problem while working under time and resource constraints, much like those faced by industrial applied mathematicians. Problems used for the M3 challenge must be realistic modeling problems that can be studied, solved, and documented in 14 hours by high school students using only internet resources and publicly available reference materials. For this year's problem, teams created a mathematical model to determine the best regions in the country for establishing rail lines as part of a revived high-speed intercity passenger rail program. The regions were ranked based on estimates of ridership numbers over the next 20 years and costs of building and maintenance, in addition to the effects such rail networks would have on American dependence on foreign energy. I knew I was going to see a lot of variation in answers. We had 10 different regions. I didn't expect to see the answer be, oh, it's New England, Northeast New England, or it's the Empire region. And so I was expecting to see a lot of variation in answers, and I was very pleased to see that. You know, I was looking to see what was key in determining a solution, determining how ridership would be increased, and determining what made sense for the U.S. in terms of this investment. I mean, overall, I was very pleased in, in seeing all these different results and all the, the care and time that people put into it. I think our, our ranking system was kind of a novel approach because it was very quantified. There were no, there was no subjectivity in it, which I think is definitely important moving to the real world with an issue like this. You definitely, you need concrete reasons to back everything up. I think that our team's solution had a lot of policy recommendations. Uh, it was very important that we came up with uh, not only the methodology, which is more of the math, but the solution, which comes up with the policy. The main point was that we wouldn't actually implement the train project because a lot of energy consumption data showed that it really wouldn't save that much energy. And then we calculated that it would take a long time to pay back, so it wouldn't actually be beneficial to anyone. We concluded that California, followed by Chicago Hub, would be the best regions to install high-speed rail because in California has the lowest operating cost per rider, has the highest unemployment rate, so it could benefit a lot from that, and it would also result in the largest amount of fuel saved. And additionally, the Chicago Hub area, even though it's the most expensive project, would result in the highest increase in GDP for the country. What I was focusing on was the individual decision-making aspect of the problem. That is, um, what would make a person decide to take the train rather than ride in a car. And so we looked at um, both the cost and time benefits and factoring in like the different speeds of the vehicles and then like for a train you purchase a monthly pass while for a car you have to pay for gas money. I think with many of these questions, we, we all know, all the questions that we answered, we don't, in any applied math question, it's very rare that you actually know the answer. You have ideas, but you want to see what other people think. Oh my gosh, this type of problem, this type of math modeling, this type of approach is enormously helpful, particularly in mathematics, because I think historically math education has been very content skill specific rather than application driven, and giving kids the opportunity to apply what they know just opens up worlds for them.